Welcome to your Pure Foundations intro video. My name is Caitlin, and today we're joined by Carissa, and we're so glad that you're here checking out this video today. It's a great place to get started, whether you're brand new to Pure Bar or you've been at it for a while. We'll go through a lot of great tips and tricks on how to maximize your Pure Bar workout. And that being said, Pure Bar really is for everybody, all ages, fitness levels, whether you're recovering from an injury or you're pregnant, it's a great workout. And with some of these tips we'll go through today, you'll really be able to get the most out of each and every Pure Bar workout you do. So let's start by talking about the driving concept behind the technique. So Pure Bar, our aim is to work every single muscle group in the body to the point of fatigue. And we couple that with some stretching to really lengthen and strengthen the muscles and change your overall physique. How long have you been at it? Couple years. Couple years, and look at her physique. <laughs> so we work arms, core, thighs, seats, all of those focus areas, every single class. Again, to the point of fatigue where sometimes your muscles might even start to shake as you start to feel those changes happening in your body. So the other part of this driving concept in the Pure Bar technique is that it really tries to incite a mind-muscle connection, what we like to call. So rather than just moving through ranges of motion, you're always trying to call on the specific muscle groups we're targeting. So if it's seat work, we talked about working the seat. You'll think about squeezing and contracting those muscles, almost like you're making a fist with your hand, and then moving against those sort of muscle contractions, creating that full body awareness throughout every class, which definitely takes a little bit of time to achieve and tap into. So you might just feel yourself moving at first, it might not be that hard, or maybe it's really hard, but you'll start to get how to work even deeper by inciting that mind-body connection. So we've talked about how we're working every muscle group, and with that, you'll notice the class structure remains pretty similar throughout all the workouts you'll do with us. So typically, you're gonna see the workout start with what we call warm up, and it might uh, confuse you the first time you do it because it's pretty intense, right? Our warm up is really centered around heating up the core, so you're gonna feel your core engage the second you get into this workout. So we'll start on the floor with a lot of core work, some planks, some push ups you'll think that had to have been a whole workout because it felt like my whole body, but <laughs> we'll keep going from there. We, we usually have some weight work. We use light set of weights, two, three pounds or no weights at all, um, to really tone and sculpt the muscles with some high repetition. And then we'll move into some work focusing on the thighs and the legs, big muscle groups there. We'll isolate those. We'll follow that by a stretch to lengthen out the muscles, and then we'll move into some seat focus work. That's what's in these days. Everybody wants tight, high, lifted seat, yeah. Um, strong muscles, so we'll spend a lot of time there. They're big muscle groups. They take a while to fatigue, so we work them for a while. And then we'll move into a bunch more core work because that's how we do things at Pure Bar. The core is involved in every single piece of our class, even when you're working the thighs, when you're working the seat. It's all always about the core, so we try to really strengthen those muscles during every workout. So with that flow, you'll also notice every class is really driven by the music. So you'll move on beat to the music during class, and what that does is helps us as instructors to help you get the right amount of reps in every workout. And like we mentioned before, it's high repetition, so you're gonna be doing a lot, but hopefully the music starts to take your mind away from maybe how much your muscles are shaking or how fatigued you're getting and you'll just feel like, okay, the music's good. I can, yeah. I can get on board with Jam. lifting a few more times, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so with our class being musically driven, what you'll also notice is that it's a very fast pace. We talked about that a little bit in the warm up. You're gonna get into hard work right away and it's gonna move quick. You know, We'll be moving arms and legs out two and two and then all of a sudden you're curling to the right. So every class you just wanna keep your ears open for the cues as they're happening. Do as much as you can, but know that it might, it might take time to catch on to every single move and that's okay. Nobody starts out at this perfect at all, by any means. So do what you can, and on that fast-paced 
note, it's also important to note that you are in control of modifying as much as you need to throughout the workouts. We'll be showing you some really good examples of what you can do and what you should be feeling through each section of class, but it's all up to you and, and you can take it at your own pace throughout the workout. So if you couldn't get all those curls in, if you had to set your feet down for a second and pick them right back up, that's okay. We try not to, to lose form in the body, um, just to muscle through those last reps. Just take a second, breathe, get right back in, and keep going. And you'll see yourself achieve more and more every single class you do. At first, you know, we'll talk a little bit about a plank. We, we do it for 90 seconds a lot of time at Pure Bar, which is kind of a shock, right? Uh, maybe you can only do it for 30 or 60 seconds at first, and then over time you'll, you'll see yourself get stronger and better, and, and that kind of want, makes you have this addictive feeling. You want to keep coming back and building those muscles more and more so you can stick with all the moves throughout class. So now that we've kind of talked about the flow and the structure and, and how we're moving in class, you should also know that there's quite a few general pure bar terms or pure bar lingo um, that we want you to be familiar with before you jump in. So we'll just go through a few key terms here that might help you be a little more successful with your workout. So the first one you're gonna hear is heavy tailbone. So we'll have Carissa get into a low V position here with her heels together, knees bent, and let's have her send her arms forward. So heavy tailbone is all about the core. So we'll see her draw her abs in to flatten her back. So what we want here is so that's back not flat, arched out, and then heavy tailbone, she flattens her back so that we have a neutral spine and her tailbone's pointing straight toward the floor. And you'll notice to achieve that, you really have to keep the abs tight. So if you're watching this at home, you might wanna get up and try this position with your heels together, they're glued in a narrow little V, and her knees are slightly bent. And then try to draw your abs in. You're using some balance, and then you're flattening out your back here. So that is the heavy tailbone position. You're gonna hear that a lot. What you'll hear are position setup cues throughout class. Really pay attention to those, and then right at the end, after we get you into whatever crazy position you're in, we'll say heavy tailbone to remind you to get your core engaged. Now from there, you're also gonna hear tuck a lot, and tuck is an action that happens on the position. So once the music starts, we'll say tuck to tempo. So she'll start rolling her hips under, shortening the space between hip bones and rib cage. So with every tuck under, you can even see her leg shaking a little bit while she's doing it. So her abs are contracting back and we're shortening the space between hip bones and rib cage so that she can get that action. So we're coming a little past that neutral spine to get into the tuck position. Okay, maybe we take a quick break from that position. I know, right? It's, it's hard even just really engaging those muscles. So you always want to be aware. And that's tuck and heavy tailbone. Some other common terms you'll hear are um, referring to range of motion. So we'll talk about down an inch, up an inch. Maybe we go hip, feet, hip with apart. So if you're doing this at home with us, you can try. We'll go arms forward so you have balance. And the rise under your highest tippy toes. Bend your knees, sink your seat. And let's find the heavy tailbone again. There we go. See her neutral spine. So we'll do these small movements throughout class. This one's called down an inch, up an inch. So we go down an inch, up an inch. Little down, little up. So rather than coming down and lifting really fast back up and fully extending the legs, you'll see how this is the range of motion of a paper clip. While she's keeping the abs contract in the back flat so that everything's engaged and we're really targeting the tops of the thighs here, you'll hear pulse a lot too, which is the same thing, just a little smaller and a little faster. So she's pulsing the tempo, pulse and pulse. You'll hear that one. Perfect, so one more common term we'll talk about is the squeeze. So let's do um, legs zip together if you're trying this at home. Arms forward, we'll rise all the way into the or low heels, how about? Bend the knees, sink the seat toward any level. Everybody find your heavy tailbone. All right, you're not gonna see much happening here because this is squeeze. So squeeze is like you're squeezing a piece of paper right between your thighs. You wanna almost squeeze the piece of paper out of existence. So maybe you try a few reps here, squeezing and zipping everything up down the midline. So core is tight, back is flat, she's sunk to her lowest point and she's squeezing, which we don't even really see. It's that small of a motion, but it's engaging all the way down the midline. Perfect, that's hard, isn't it? <laughs> So those are a few common terms you'll hear throughout class. Now that we've talked a lot about the general concept of Pure Bar, what we're looking to work, how the class flows, we wanna jump into a few 
specific examples of positioning and movement uh, that you might want to think about as you take each class. So let's start with the warm up and the floor work. So we'll have Carissa come down into a hundreds position, and this is generally how class starts after you do a bunch of knee ups and you're getting your heart rate up. We drop right into this insanely intense abs position called hundreds. So we'll have her center leg straight on the diagonal, zip together pointed, and her arms are out in front of her. So the ideal position here, her shoulder blades will be lifted all the way off the floor. The first time you do this, we let it all go. <laughs> you may be feeling like this, and guess what, your abs are still engaged even with your upper body down, but we really wanna try to get hundreds with the upper body up. So if it's a lot for you to have your legs straight, straight legs are so hard to achieve actually. It takes a lot of work through the legs to get there. Few options, you could always bend the knees, bring them a little more over the hips so that you're not sacrificing letting the shoulder blades fall to the floor, or you can set the feet all the way on the floor. And then from there, we're pumping the arms and rather than doing a huge pump, will you show a huge pump, right? <laughs> Where it's just coming through the shoulder joint here, we wanna make it a really small pump and let the pump come from the upper abs. So maybe if you're at home, you come to the floor in this position and give that a try, where you're doing a huge pump, and then feel the difference where you make it smaller, contract your upper abs as tight as you can, and then push like you're pushing right into some really thick molasses. Do you feel that? Oh, yeah. yeah. So maybe, you know, if we're cueing legs on the diagonal with some crazy action and the ankles are crossed or they're in a scissor or whatever else it is, find what works for you. And if that means putting the feet on the floor or bending the legs, shoulder blades up is where you're going to get the most action for the upper abs. And that's what we want to focus on right away when we, when we start class. So the next position, maybe you want to release that for a second. The next position we'll um, talk about is a teaser, which you're going to see right away um, once you get into the warm up. So we'll start with her feet on the floor and her arms long overhead. And then she's going to, this is a slow roll up into a full sit up. So we'll see her roll up four counts, two, three, and four. And you can hold here for a second. The first time you do this, it may be really shocking for your body, right? We all used to do full sit-ups growing up, and, and then all of a sudden we're back at Pure Bar doing a full sit-up again, and you're like, I don't have any of those muscles anymore. Uh, but the best option would be a light grip on the thighs if you need it, and then slow low, lower back. So you may see many variations of this where the legs are up, um, they're floating at the top, right? But take your layer all the way straight. That's beautiful. That takes a little while to achieve. Um, but best layer options would be to keep the feet down and light grip behind the thighs, even if there's some extra leg action happening. What we want to focus on is keeping the feet planting down and really articulating through the spine slowly and with control on the way up and down to start to build the strength. And so what you'll notice is if you, if you kind of sacrifice letting the feet fly up and muscling it up as you're working on it, you'll never really build the strength in those muscles. So find the form, get that right, and then start to build on extending the legs or holding the arms forward, or let's see that full V sit again, <laughs> all the way up. So another uh, position we'll talk about here are planks. So forearm plank, we talked about this a little bit. Yeah, we'll go on the forearms with your feet hip width apart. You could try this with us at home. Maybe you're just holding it for a second while we talk about this. Uh, but proper position here in the plank would be hips, shoulders, right in line, all the way from the top of the head to the tip of the heels. You want to keep the abs pulling in tight. And that heavy tailbone, that neutral spine effect we talk about actually comes into play here. We talked about this already a little bit. It takes a lot of time to build that strength. So let it happen. And a few options for you can come to your knees just like Carissa is as you're working to build that strength in a forearm plank. Knees are a great option. What I like to tell clients is, take, it's 90 seconds, but maybe you go 30, drop to your knees for five seconds, and then come back to your toes for another 45 seconds. Try, it, just because you go to your knees doesn't mean you have to stay there. Like, challenge yourself to keep popping back in and out, and one day you'll be able to do that full 90 second plank. So again, long line from top of the head to the tip of the heels, nice, strong, flat back, broad through the shoulder blades. And we'll notice she has her forearms in a number 11 here. Also to challenge the upper body a little more, every muscle is working in these forearm planks, which is why we love them so much. And our shoulders are right over her elbows. So a few great options for you there on a plank. 
Another really exciting part of the warm up that you'll see uh, is the push up section. So we'll have a lot of push ups. Um, let's just talk about the straight arm plank position that leads to a push up. So feet uh, hip width apart with the legs straight. So we want to find a really strong position here. Same thing we talked about in the forearm plank with the upper back, shoulder blades nice and broad, length through the top of the head, hands a little wider than the shoulders or listen to what the cues are. Sometimes hands will be narrow, sometimes they'll be wide. Um, and then when she does the push-up, depending on level of strength, we try to keep the shoulder blades nice and broad and try to stay strong. And maybe when you're starting, maybe show them a really small range of motion. Maybe it's a little smaller when you're on the toes and you start to build that strength more and more. Ideally, maybe we'll see her go all the way down, so shoulders in line with elbows, and then she pushes right back up. What we really are looking for here is to keep core engaged, keep upper back tight and strong, and use the chest, too, to push up and away from the floor. So great option, whether your teacher cues it or not, is to come to your knees. Um, shins can be flat on the floor, option one, or heels to your seat, even, option two. And what that might do is help you increase that range of motion as you're building up the strength, and, and that'll help you eventually get, a, get a even stronger at your push-ups. But if you do have your heels to your seat, you try to keep them really close to your seat, and that way your hips will push forward, your back will stay flat, and your abs will stay tight. All right, so that's a little bit about what happens in the quote, warm up, <laughs> right? We just saw there's this intense ab section. Uh, we get into planks, we get into push-ups. So it really is full body. Like before we get into all the other muscle groups of class, everything is engaged, but we don't stop there. <laughs> we stand up and head into some weight work. So we mentioned at the beginning that we use really light sets of weights. So these are two pound weights actually super light, but what we want to talk about today is that you can actually do pure bar without any weights and get just as great of a workout for the arms. So let's start without the weights and talk about the mind-body connection. So if you're at home joining us, try putting your arms into O, make two fists, we'll just have feet hip-width apart, and why don't we practice our heavy tailbone while we do it? And let's just try to let the arms fly open. So they just fly open and close, and you'll hear this cue a lot, open and close the arms while we're in weight work and we're holding the weights. But what we want to do, try to squeeze and contract every muscle through the shoulders and the corner of the chest, and then pull your arms open like you're stretching a rubber band. Your brain is talking to your muscles to make that tight contraction as you open and close. You'll see our arms are kind of shaking as we do it. Hopefully you're feeling that at home too. And that is how we should really be moving. This is a great example of how you should be moving throughout class. It's all about creating those contractions in the muscles and then moving against them. So whether it's arm work, floor work, we talked a little bit in the hundreds, we're contracted and then we're pushing. This is just a nice visual and hopefully you just gave that a try. So then let's say she's doing that and she adds weights. We should really start to see a difference in the muscles and they're shaking and fatiguing a little bit as she creates that strong contraction by tapping brain into muscle there. Awesome, so throughout the weight work, another thing to note here, whether you're using the weights or not, you always have the option to let them go. There will be times at the end of class we'll have the arms in muscle man and your shoulders are just so fatigued. You can try to push through the end, but if your shoulders start to rise up and you're just barely there, let the weights go. Just set them down gently so you don't drop them on your toes and then try to get in the proper form with your shoulders relaxed. You always want to try to get achieve proper form over just muscling through something because we create memories in the muscles every time we go through those motions. So better to be in the proper form with less weight than to try to just push your way through it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what you might see in the thigh section of class. So we'll head to our bar here, and we'll have Carissa um, turn to, the, to profile. We'll have her bring her feet hip-width apart, parallel first. So during thigh work, and we talked a little bit about this at the beginning, you always want to listen to the cues your teacher is giving you as they set up a position before you start moving. That setup is almost more important than the entire exercise because we could hold in any position without even moving and it should be so hard. So if you get the position correct, then everything else should go really well for you. So let's say she had her feet hip width apart, parallel. Um, there's two big things to note in the thigh section. We always try to target tops of the thighs and also outer and inner thighs. 
So tops of the thighs and outer inner thighs. If you hear your teacher say bring your feet hip width apart parallel, let's actually turn the face this way and let's show them. A lot of people think hip width apart. We're all, we all think we have these crazy wide hips, so we're like hip width apart, right? You're thinking your outer hips distance, but you really wanna think inner hips distance, the edges of your feet should hit that distance. So that's feet hip width apart, parallel, and your toes are pointing straight forward. So whenever you hear your teacher set you up into a position with feet hip width apart, parallel, toes forward, know that we're gonna be trying to target tops of the thighs in those positions. So we see feet hip width there, working tops of the thighs. There's only two, so the other one you'll hear is heels together, toes apart. So if we have the feet, you'll see this narrow V shape, and you also wanna to try to not overdo that and really turn it out. We want a nice narrow V to protect the knee joint there. If we're starting heels together, toes apart, that'll be when you're targeting outer thighs and inner thighs. So those are your two thigh cues. Sometimes you'll bring your feet wider than your hips, but the toes are still turned out, so still outer and inner thighs as well. But let's turn profile and we'll bring feet hip width apart, parallel, or actually let's do heels together, toes apart, arm forward, rise under tippy toes, maybe you're trying this at home, glue your heels together, bend your knees, sink your seat toward knee level, and then we'll practice the heavy tailbone again. So here we are in this position, it has a heavy tailbone, and we talked about how she glued her heels together. We had inner and outer thighs. And we've already talked about a movement example here, but let's see her go down an inch, up an inch, just to recall that range of motion. While she's keeping the core tight, and while she's keeping the heels all the way lifted, you can actually see her muscles shaking a little bit already. And then let's hold it still at your lowest point. If you're trying this at home, hold it low, keep your abs tight, press your heels up all the way, sink it one more inch lower, you're just holding here. And everything, I see her muscles shaking, everything should be shaking just because holding it should be that hard if you're really tapping into that brain muscle connection we already talked about by continuously pulling the core in and keeping the back flat. So throughout thigh work, you can pop out of it. Uh, you really just wanna make sure you're keeping everything in control. You continue to remind yourself, keep my core tight, keep my back flat, keep pressing my heels, keep them lifting, and try to limit those ranges of motion into whatever our teacher's cueing. Maybe it's pulse, maybe it's squeeze, maybe it's down an inch, up an inch. Sometimes there's a circle, <laughs> that might happen, uh, but you still wanna keep it nice and in control. Okay, so that's a little bit for thigh work. Let's talk a little bit about what will happen in the seat section of class. So during seat, we also do, let's show them the heels together, toes apart again. If we're working um, what we call a turnout position, we're gonna target outside seat into the hip area. So all the way into the waistline. Yep, and then if we do, um, if your teacher cues you to start a seat with feet hip width apart, parallel, we'll be targeting that base of the seat back of the leg. And we sometimes refer to this as the pure bar ledge where the seat meets the hamstring to get it nice and lifted. So let's talk about a turnout example. We'll turn so you're on profile and if you're at home, we'll set you up into it. With your left side on your support, wrap your right arm around your waist, heels together, toes apart. Send your right leg on the back diagonal, straight, point the toes. Let's have a soft bend in the knee. On this one, let's tuck the hips under so we can really almost correct a little more. Once you send your leg back, you really lose your heavy tailbone, so you almost have to think tuck to really pull it back under. Wow, that was awesome. Hopefully you saw that at home. So leg is strong and straight and really turned out here. And what we want to think about in this position, you're going to hear all kinds of cues like lift to tempo, circle around, maybe a tiny bend and extend, bend stretch, you're going to hear that one. But what you wanna do, like we've been talking about the whole time, is find that brain muscle connection. So if you're here in the position at home, let's just think about squeezing the side seat. So just think contract, contract. It's just squeezing the muscles of the outside seat. Put that in your brain. Hopefully you're trying that. And now let's add a lift as you do the squeeze lift, squeeze lift. So every single cue you hear, you should think, create that contraction first and then move second to get the most out of your workout. So we've shown just a range of motion without contracting, just lifting through the hip, lifting through the joint. You can kind of see how easy that is. Now squeeze, and you'll see how much smaller her range of motion gets by really contracting those muscles. Awesome, so let's talk about one in parallel too. Let's come to the floor for a tabletop, and I'll come to this side of you. We'll bend, if you're on at home, come to all fours, bend your right heel to your seat. Hips face down, we'll take a soft bend in the elbows, and then tuck your hips under. So we'll notice her back got nice and flat here. So this is a staple pure bar position where we're working, again, base of the seat, back of the leg into the hamstring. 
But something important to note here, again on ranges of motion, this is just a nice visual for you to see. If she does a big range of motion lower and lift, and on the lift you'll see this arch come into her back, she's really losing a lot of the focus here in the seat and we're putting some added tension into the back that we don't really need. So to be successful, this, this, you try to think about holding a glass of water on your back. Let's try a tiny lower and lift and you'll see no arch comes into her back as she lifts and what that effectively does is almost cuts her range of motion in half. There's just no range of motion left if you're keeping the core tight keeping the back flat, there's nowhere for that leg to go, and that's when you get to squeeze in the base of the seat and contract all those muscles as tight as you can. So you'll see it's a small range of motion, it might be different than you're used to working this position. Let's show the big range of motion one more time. You might feel like, oh my gosh, I'm crushing it by doing all these big leg lifts here, but guess what, if you hold this tight, back flat, abs tight, cut this range of motion in half, you're gonna feel so much more work. Are your muscles shaking a little there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so we want to stay strong through the upper back in this one as well. You'll also try to keep your hips from opening. We were starting in that parallel position here. Hips are facing down, unless sometimes you'll hear your teacher say, lift the right hip slightly higher than the left or the other one, then we'll be targeting the side of the seat in this position, but same action applies with the squeeze and keeping the abs tight. Okay, so we've gone through most of the class. Let's talk about how we end with the uh, ab work. So we'll have a seat. Um, with our feet hip width, and maybe we'll all do this together to start. So feet are hip width parallel on the floor. And then if you could come back onto your forearms, if you're trying this at home, this will be our ab work right at the end of class where you've gotten through so much. You've already worked your abs a bunch, but now we, we tap it out with a little bit more ab work. So once you're here in this position with your forearms on the floor, Try to just reach one arm, both arms forward in this low position. Hopefully you feel your abs crazy engaged, just holding here. And this has kind of automatically forced you into the C curve position. This is how the position might be for you someday where you're working, but let's sit on up. That might not be that realistic to go through that whole section like that. So normally you'll hear us say, with your setting up your feet, let's have them hip width and a lycra behind your thighs. And then you round your waistband back toward the floor. So let's have Carissa turn slightly so you can see where we're rounding our waistband back. You'll see her lower spine rounding toward the floor. So she's creating this nice C curve in her spine. Her upper abs are contracted and her hips are tucked under. So the tips of her hip bones are coming a little closer to her rib cage. So it's like upper and lower half are folding in half. Hopefully you're trying that at home. Creating, think about squeezing your core as tight as you can, like you were getting ready to take a punch right in the gut. Tense everything up. That's how you should start this entire section of class. You could easily just sit here and like kind of let the abs go and it will be a nice, easy workout. But if you're working from that point of tension and then doing any movements, if we have back an inch, up an inch, which might look like this, very small, but say she's holding all that tension in her core with the halves folded, nice C shape, she's gonna get a lot more work out of this position, which will be really great. And at the end of class, this might be really hard for you. Any arm options, you can always like grip behind your thighs. If you have a little ball at home, you can place it behind your lower back for support. Um, if you're still working on building strength there, those are nice options, but light grip is always it's a great one while you're working on that. So one more thing we'll talk about here too, is just because it's a nice visual, is when we're rotated to the one side or the others, we try to get the obliques through here. Let's have a little twist and send the arms forward. Um, what we want to do here, if we're twisting to tempo, let's say, or doing little rotations, we show them a rotate from the shoulders. Yeah, so she's just doing a kind of a big rotation here, but then let's take it from the core. So start in the middle and rotate, and the shoulders just kind of follow along. You want to think about moving like that throughout any ab work, where again, it's initiating from, the movement initiates from the muscles contracting first, and then everything else just kind of ends up along for the ride. All right, so one more section of class we'll talk about is our cool down. Um, so we'll have Carissa just come to a straddle stretch here with her legs wide and we'll point the toes. And before we get into that, um, it's just important to note that stretching is really as important as the exercises in Pure Bar. That's how we create that overall toned, strong and flexible uh, physique is by taking the time to stretch. You really want to try not to rush things, breathe into it, and know that when you first start stretching, it may be really foreign to your body and things start to bend and it won't, it won't feel that good to hold in stretches and that's okay. It just 
takes time, just like it takes time to build the strength in plank or push-ups, it's gonna take time to, to build the length and the muscles and, and the flexibility um, to move into some of these positions. So we'll do this position at the end of class. Let's have her show with her arms walking forward. You might be next to someone in class that just goes for it all the way and you're feeling like, why doesn't my body do that? And guess what, I've been doing it for eight years now and my body still doesn't do that. Some of us are just more or less flexible in the hips, um, but just know that you can always come to just whatever works for you. Yeah, maybe it's forearms, maybe it's up on the hands, just a tiny bit forward here will get you the stretch you need through those inner thighs. You can also narrow up the legs a bit. If maybe you have a much more narrow stance here. Um, you'll still be getting the work you need, but just highlighting here that modifying stretching as you needing it, need to and not taking these ranges of motion to crazy places when your body's not ready is also really important. Um, and not, try not to let the feet turn in here toward the floor just to get that stretch or big bends in the legs. You want to really keep the knees spiraling open, hips pulling back, um, working for a flat back here as well, and just let that build over time. So same when we bring both legs forward, you know, maybe it's just a small little hinge at first reaching toward the toes and eventually you'll be able to, to really fold into that all the way as you start to, to do this more and your body becomes more and more familiar with it. All right, so you have been through the general concept of Pure Bar, what we're trying to work, how we target and isolate the muscles. We talked a little bit about general class flow, some lingo you may hear, and we've highlighted a few really great examples for you in each section of class, what you might wanna be aware of as you start to get into these workouts. So from here, we recommend you maybe take some of the new foundations workouts. Um, those workouts will be a great place to start uh, with your Pure Bar journey. And then maybe check out a studio, get into class so you can get some more hands-on interaction. But overall, just have fun and remember that everybody starts somewhere. We've seen Iron Ladies work out next to people that haven't worked out in 20 years and they're doing it the same way and their muscles are feeling it just as much, but in different ways because we're working the body in such a different way by really tapping in and isolating all these different parts. So just let yourself be new, take the few foundations classes to dive in, do a little bit every day. Maybe it starts with three classes a week and you build up to six classes a week. All right, we'll see you next time.